Hey everybody, I'm Nathan Zagantz. I am acting principal trombone of the Atlanta Symphony. My official job is associate principal slash second trombone slash bass trombone. So that's why I'm here today to describe all the trombones that I use in the orchestra. That was the opening of Arthur Pryor's Blue Bells of Scotland, one of the most famous tenor trombone solos of all time. So this instrument right here is the symphonic tenor. I use this in the orchestra almost 80 to 90 percent of the time. The instruments you see behind me are the bass trombone, the alto trombone, and the non-symphonic tenor, or the straight trombone, that I will explain later on. This one today is uh, one of my favorite trombones of all time. It lets me do so many things. You may have noticed that on this trombone, I have this little thing right here, which is called the F attachment, or a valve. Now this helps me do many things, but the main thing is, I can tune my trombone from B flat to F. Notice how I didn't have to move my slide, yet I've got a fourth difference on my trombone. It really helps me when I'm playing, so I don't have to reach out all the way from here to here all the time. I'm going to perform for you a piece by Enrique Crespo called Improvisations. This will demonstrate how I'm going to use the valve. If you watch carefully, you can see me pressing down the lever a bunch of times to go in and out to avoid going from first to seventh positions and just staying in first or second or a combination of therefore. Another excerpt you may know, it's very familiar, is Bolero. The next trombone I have for you is my Con 8H from 1937. This trombone is one of my favorites and notice there is no valve. You're going to notice that the sound is not quite the same. It's going to be a little lighter, a little sweeter, and I love every opportunity I get a chance to bring this in the orchestra. I will bring it for the orchestra for Brahms 1, Schubert 9, and any other chance I get where the pieces are light enough. To demonstrate the difference in sound quality and timbre, I'm going to play the bolero that I just played on the symphonic tenor with the straight tenor.
Another thing I like to do besides playing the latter pieces in the orchestra, anytime we get a chance to do singing in the rain, I'm getting sentiment over you. I take advantage of all the jazz opportunities I can on this thing. The most famous thing I do in the orchestra on this trombone is this next solo, Mozart's Tuba Mira. Now, the reason I would play this in the orchestra versus my symphonic tenor is because I will be using the alto trombone on the first trombone and to scale down and give this little trombone a chance to be heard in the orchestra, the whole rest of the trombone section will down the line play a smaller instrument. Not only is it smaller, but this is a way more fun instrument to play on this as well. As I said earlier, when I'm using the straight trombone, it's because the first trombone will be using the alto trombone. If you notice on it, it's pretty small, almost half as small as the other ones. It's keyed in E flat, which makes it even higher pitch. Now, the cool part about this instrument is really cool looking. If you look at the end here, it has a bunch of crazy snakes. It's all different colors. This is actually made of sterling silver. It even has the same markings that your utensils in your kitchen have. I would use this on peaches such as Beethoven 9, Beethoven 5, Beethoven 6, lots of Beethoven, Brahms 1, I will use it also on Mozart's Requiem. Beethoven was one of the first composers to put trombone in their symphonies. He referred to us as better noise than the kettle drum. I'll give you an example of Beethoven's writing for the alto trombone from the Ninth Symphony.
I have with me here, the last instrument that I'm responsible for in the orchestra is the bass trombone. You may notice that it's a lot bigger than the other ones, which creates a lot deeper sound, so the rest of the trombone section can sit upon the sound of this instrument. The coolest thing about this is I have not one, but two valves. The symphonic tenor had one valve, the straight tenor had no valves, the alto can have a valve, but mine does not. But the second valve allows me to do some crazy, fun things. It's almost like playing the tuba, except for I would need one more valve. Haydn's creation has one of the most exposed bass trombone parts. The creation is a little light on the bass trombone side, but to really get the grasp of what the bass trombone can do, I'm going to perform for you the calls for the bass trombone in Heldenleben. <laughs> Possibly the most famous bass trombone tuba duo for an excerpt is The Fountains of Rome by Respighi. The bass trombone, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated solo instruments of the orchestra. Thank you for joining me today on our trombone adventure. I hope you've enjoyed learning about all the different instruments that I use in the orchestra.